Hi, I'm Summer McStravick, and welcome to Money Intuition, where we get to explore the minds and thinking of some very successful women who've used both their intuition and their know-how to create sustainable, financially abundant, and importantly, self-created lives. So my guest today is Rachel Henka, and I'm just getting to know you, Rachel, so this is a great way for me to, you know, you know, send all kinds of questions and figure out what you do and who you are as well as our whole audience. Um, Rachel's written a book called The Niche Expert and she's also the founder of her own website and business which is rachelhenka.com. You'll see that on your screen. Um, if you're thinking of going into business for yourself, she will help you figure out how to create not just visibility for your business but figure out what you're really good at and what you're most likely to become known for. So, um, Rachel, the Hello. reason I think you are going to be a great expert for our interview series here is that we've been talking a lot about self-development turning into financial development. And when you mm -hmm. help people find their niche, you're actually helping them in their own self-exploration, right? So you have a real personal, personal development focus as you help people grow their businesses. Can we start with that and kind of explain your way of thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, uh, you know, as you've mentioned, it's about creating your own career. Yes. And I've very much done that. I had no idea what I was going to do when I started out. You know, I started out, um, I literally, um, I moved from Jerusalem and we, um, we just had to kind of, decide what we're going to do um, and I thought well you know I, what can I do so I can be home for my kids yeah. um, and really it was you know the, the whole niche thing came a little bit later first of all I started a home-based business um, and I developed my skills and I really didn't have a big plan it just kind of happened um, and with the niche I had to kind of go back to the drawing board and I thought well and you know as we were chatting earlier I said it's very much finding your niche for all people think it's marketing it's also very much a journey of you know personal um, well self-discovery yeah. and I got so confused with it Summer that's why I developed the materials and wrote my book because um, you know I found so many people are either following you know, trying to create a business that um, they think will make money mm -hmm. but doesn't fulfill their soul and their purpose okay. um, or the other side is I call it the two pillars really of niche is um, so you've got the profit pillar you've got the purpose pillar um, the other side is you've got the folks who are going after the purpose in such a big way but they're not seeing any money yeah. because they're not bringing in the practical element so I'm a really practical person but I'm also very spiritual and I've, you know, just always been on the personal development path. Um, so I like to think that I really bring those two together for people in a practical way that they can say, hey, what's my expertise or what can I develop as my expertise so that I can actually have both those lovely pillars in place um, to make the big difference that we all want to make, but also have the money show up. Right. So when a person is... Um say trying to figure out what their focus is and maybe this is someone who hasn't they don't think of themselves as an entrepreneur yet they're not even there or maybe they are an entrepreneur and they're working a business but they still feel like I don't know what the me in my business is I don't know what you know what what makes me different than everyone else how do you start working with a person to help them figure that out yeah um it's interesting really, it's, it is very much um, having the faith to just keep moving forward yeah. and not wanting everything to be perfect before you start, yeah. which is where <laughs> so many of us I'm agreeing complete. with you because I know the feeling <laughs> so well, I challenge it every day. We get completely stuck with that and yeah. it's, you know, I know, we're, I know, you're, you, you, know you focus a lot on helping people move through their fears that's been one of the, the biggest blocks for me is always dealing with this fear and I've had it all my life really yeah. so when you suddenly become an entrepreneur there's all this stuff that comes up for you um, but you can't let it stop you so you have to just think okay so I say with the niche it doesn't have to be perfect 
Um, obviously, there's some practical research you can do and you can start to think about who would you like to work with? Um, you know, what problem can you help people solve? And then, you know, I have what I call a profitable niche formula, actually, um, which kind of stops people just going after, as I say, one little bit of the niche and not really being clear on the other bits. Right. Um, so there's all kinds of things that go into that. But I think in regard to your question, it's a case of, you know, sometimes your niche will find you, mm -hmm. but you have to move forward. You have to help it. <laughs> you have to just start doing something. Right. And, you know, the right people will, as you know, start to show up. And you will start to feel, oh, okay, this feels right to me. I like working with those people. Okay. We were talking about how someone can find their niche and then make it profitable. Because I think you're so right. A lot of us have things we love to do, we're passionate to do, but then we think there's no money there. We can't do that. We can't survive on that. How do you help people kind of get through that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, as I said, it's very much uh, um, not just staying in that research zone which yeah. people do for so long yeah. it's actually just starting you know if you're if you're working in a kind of service business I, w I tend to work with entrepreneurial experts or you know they may just be starting or they may be more established they want to go online um, but it's really a case of turning it into okay how can I actually help a real person today um, you know there's a lot of hype on the internet summer as you know yeah. and it's easy to get lost in that um, which is why I created a seven-step system that helps people really cover all the bases so they can do it in the right order right. and they can actually develop real products and services mm -hmm. that can help a real person. Um, and then from there, as you know, when you have that in place and you're very clear on what, what problems you're helping people solve, mm -hmm. um, then it becomes easier, obviously, to reach more people. Um, but I think the big problem, and this is the reason why last year I decided to really go back into working more with private clients mm -hmm. rather than just doing, you know, one to many online, was because everything's shifting now. The digital economy has changed everything um, and you can't just hide behind your computer and hope that it's all going to work out. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, that's something I've really found. So I think what I recommend um, for my clients is that um, they actually work with real people <laughs> and help them get solutions. And then it becomes much easier to um, what I call package up your expert solution system that then can spin off into, you know, the book, the product, uh, coaching, whatever it is you want to do. Yeah. Um, but you've got to really be willing to help people with real problems and figure out how your expertise aligns with that. Well, otherwise you're just going to miss the mark. Um, you know, I, I find that when I'm helping or working with people too, they, they tend to fall into two groups. The people who know they're experts, who know that they have something that they can offer, and the people who feel like, but I'm not an expert yet. And they're not sure how to become an expert. And they want to do their work, but they feel like, I'm not expert enough to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, where the self-development aspect comes in. Because, I mean, there was oh, a yeah. time when I was not expert enough to do this, or you weren't, and mm -hmm. yet somehow we did it. What, what was that like for you when you kind of jumped that hurdle? Um, I think it's, it's all a mindset thing. Yeah. It's about making a decision that even though you're not perfect, you may be judged. <laughs> It can be scary, especially, um, you know, like I said, working online, people sometimes think that they're going to be able to hide out. Actually, I think it's sometimes even more scary because you've really got to develop consciously a personal brand. And the easiest way to do that is to be authentic. Um, so I think with the expert question, and I get this a lot, obviously, because of the niche expert, is I tell people to choose a topic, not just pick it out the air, but pick something that they really have some kind of experience in already, mm -hmm. some kind of expertise. And if you're not feeling that you've got that and you want to start something new, then get started. You know, get the quicker, the sooner you can get into really... Um, kind of developing your skills, 
the sooner you can be the expert. And I was very, imp- um, very inspired by the um, Outliers book. I don't know if you've read that by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, oh, I think I read one of his previous books, actually, but I haven't read yeah. Outliers. Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. But Outliers is all about success, mm-hmm. and it's about the 10,000-hour rule. Mm. So if there's something I really got from my direct sales days, working with people like Jim Rohn and um, you know, real masters of personal development, mm-hmm. it was that you need to clock up your hours of practice. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just happen like a miracle. Yeah. Um, so I say, look, the sooner you get clear on the direction you want to go, where you feel that you know, that energy, you're excited Mm -hmm. to contribute something, Um, the sooner you can get those 10,000 hours underway. Um, You don't, you don't have to have done them to make money. Mm -hmm. But you if people are jumping around, because it's not perfect, you know, jumping around, and they're never getting anywhere. So that's why I really focus on the expert. It's not because I think I like going around saying I'm an expert. It's not about that. It's about focus. It's about just deciding to master something, be as good as it, good at it as you can, and really get very clear on what your gifts, your expertise, your life experience, all coming together, how it can help people. So it's not about being perfect before you start, but it's about getting that lovely buzz of what area, what you know, direction you want to go in. Right. So if we were to plug in sort of the um, intuitive aspect to this, to the self-development, to kind of letting yourself guide you. How do you address mm-hmm. that when you're when someone is saying, here's what I want to become, I'm feeling it's right for me, it's my next step, how do I trust this, how do I know that I'm not just delusional, <laughs> this is really something in me? Yeah, um, I think, especially now in this digital age, we're seeing all kinds of careers are popping up. Things that people could never have made money doing before. We've got the, I call them the new rules and tools. We've got so many possibilities now. Um, So I think it's a case of, there's a lot of people who are very creative and very spiritual who have these lovely big ideas, but there's no practical stuff there. So I would I would center them back to let's take a look at, you know, if you want to build an online business, let's take a look at are people searching for for that kind of, you know, are they typing in into Google Mm -hmm. things about this problem? Because you can be as inspired and as excited as anything. All right. um, Let's talk a little bit about um, the energy of money and income and success. When you're working with someone helping them find what they're best at or what their niche is, you know, who they really are, what they're, they're actually offering. How do you then take a person to the next step to realize what, is, what, the, what they're offering is worth, what it is energetically worth, what it is financially worth? How do you bring that energy in to a person's development? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Okay, are we recording now? Oh yeah, we're recording. Yeah, sorry, okay, I said, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I mean, money is the sticky thing, isn't it? It's yeah. the thing that people just often get totally in bits about. Mm-hmm. Asking for money for what they do, and especially with, you know, us with our gifts and we want to help people, it's like, oh my goodness, no, I don't know how I'm gonna make a sale. Sales is, you know, it has this awful reputation. Um, and I think uh, if there's, I mean, what I've done actually, I've always been studying since the beginning, I've been studying prosperity um, and understanding that, you know, when you help somebody take the next step, you're, you know, not to think of it as selling, but to think of it as you're really helping them step up. The energy of money is that, first of all, if you give it all away free, people just don't, they don't appreciate it. Um, so I think that, you know, you're re- as you step into it, as you start to work with people, and I find that this is why I love systems, I'm crazy about systems, when you have a system and you really start to develop your expertise, your products, your programs, 
even if you're resistant to shining in your value, mm -hmm. it will start to hit you in the face because if you're working with people and you're systematic and you're delivering, you know, what, what is in you, that you're, you're, you know, you're helping them get results, you know, it doesn't matter. Even if you've got a lot of money blocks, you will start to see, oh my goodness, people are, <laughs> are really benefiting. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I say to people is, look, you can hide out, you can be resistant to giving your value or to stepping up and saying, you know, claiming your expertise. But what's happening is you're not allowing people to find you. Because if you play small because of your own issues, you're in a way, you're being more selfish. You, you think that you're helping people by not charging them. But you really have to be out there in a big way for the people that need you to get your help. So I just kind of say, look, if you feel icky about selling and that kind of thing, first of all, you need to really practice and get clear on, on your offer and what you're doing and what value you're bringing. Um, but I always just switched it into thinking about the other person. And, you know, that's what personally helps me. I don't think, oh, I'm selling this person. I think, you know, what's going to happen if I don't help them? Who's going to help them? I don't know. Maybe nobody. Maybe they're going to lose heart. Maybe they're not going to move forward. So I think especially for spiritual um, women, people, you know, I think it's that, that thing of just realizing you have to get over your own gunk so that you can help other people. And money is what we used to exchange value in the world mm -hmm. and people who pay money get way better results mm -hmm. from working with you because they're invested yeah so well, it's, that, just, it's a mindset thing isn't it yeah it's, it's huge mindset is huge that's something I've encountered a lot the last few years especially it just it, it gets bigger and bigger the more I kind of grow my message to the world the more I realize you know the message I've had for years and years but the mindset the, the understanding of how to give it, how to own it, all of that has to grow with me in order for it to get bigger. Um, that you mentioned something that we have a lot of gunk around money. It's mm -hmm. true. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons that prompted me to do the whole um, series. Because when I'm helping people, I, I often, you know, will help them financially because that's where a lot of their um, conditioning that keeps them small settles in their life, which I'm sure you see. And mm. so it's almost like playing around with career is one of the easiest places to start undoing that stuff because the other option is often playing around in your relationships, your, your marriage, or you know things that are more frightening, whereas career is more yeah. flexible, uh -huh. right? Yeah. So, yeah. So when, when you're helping somebody and you're starting to encounter all their gunk and their thinking and the things that they say to themselves that where they can't, oh, no, I can't be an expert. Oh, no, I can't do. Oh, no, I've, I've got products, but I don't know how to do them. I'm sure you encounter an amazing and array of excuses, <laughs> right? As oh. people are like, what, what, are, what are some of the most common things that you work with people to get through? Um, undercharging. Okay. Mm -hmm. People just, well, okay, so they here's don't. Here's a question. It's the guilt thing. If I'm mm -hmm. a spiritual person, I should be making my offer available to the people who need it most. And those are the people who really don't have much to spend, you know, because they're in one of the you know, most desperate places in their life. And I think it, that becomes a guilt factor for a lot of people. Or the opposite, if I'm charging more, um, then I'm somehow being less spiritual about myself you know I'm only looking for money not to truly help people I see I see both of those how do you work with those um, well that takes us ties right back to what we talked about in the beginning which is the profits and the purpose mm -hmm. um, I think it's I think there's there's two types of people there's the people who really feel very guilty about charging mm -hmm. um, and you just have to help them gently start to, you know, give their value and explain that, look, people don't take it as seriously and they won't get the results if you don't charge enough. Right. Um, and also, for me personally now, people come to me who do resonate with, even if they're terrified, mm -hmm. they do resonate with claiming their, 
you know, marketing their expertise so that they can be more focused and that kind of thing. So um, they're not as resistant to that. Um, but you've got the people that, you know, they really are feeling guilty, like you say, and you've got to just help them grow through it mm -hmm. and sort of help them position themselves so that they can attract the right people. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the other people which, to be honest, they just don't know how to charge summer. Nobody taught us That's how true. to charge. I mean, it's such a massive thing. <laughs> I mean, I was undercharging, you know, for a long time when I started out. I, I didn't know. And I thought, I just didn't know. I mean, right. until you get some coaching, you invest with somebody that has done it before you, mm -hmm. um, they know what best practice is. Uh, you only then start to realize that actually there are people who are um, learning from you, reading your newsletters, you know, you're building your brand, all that kind of thing. There are, there are a lot of people who actually want the best. Mm -hmm. And they want to invest in themselves because they understand that investing in yourself is also a spiritual thing because you're, you're growing your value for the it's world. It's true. It's true. Every time I put money into something, especially a big amount of money, I feel like, okay, I'm going to get everything out of this I can. If I, if I don't do it, if I run away from it, if I only do it halfway, I realize it's, it's me not living up to the greatness in myself. So the money yeah. for me becomes um, like a wager on a table. You know, I never think of it like I'm giving it to someone else or some other company. It's more a wager. This I'm placing a bet. How much will I grow from this? And the more I put down, the more I'm, you know, really into it. And I yeah. see that I see that in everyone. I mean, it's not just me, but you have to experience it to know that feeling. And then when you do grow, when you do push through because of that, you're like, yeah, I could do anything. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's bring it on next level. <laughs> yeah, you got because you got some skin in the game. Yeah. And I mean, I call it. Um, I have a program called the Freedom. It's because I teach the what I call the freedom business model, and it's um, I call it your you know when you put down your deposit when you get started, it's like your commitment to freedom. Right. Um, um, and I learned about that from my mentor, you know, the commitment, um, and it really does make a huge difference. I have a new client who she literally was, I mean, she was really undercharging, but like I say, she just didn't know what right. to charge. Yeah. So when we work systematically through and created her, what I call the expert solution system for her, mm -hmm. she could see all her value just jumped out at her. <clears throat> Excuse me. And she actually said to me, I'm becoming an expert before your eyes. Right. And it was all there before, but it was all in bits. Yes. It wasn't systematically laid out for her to see. So, of course, what happened was she went straight out and got a client uh -huh. um, and, you know, almost got her total investment back with me just after one call because it's a mindset thing. It's not yeah. that she doesn't have that great value in her already. Right. I love it's that you have a incredible. tool that shows people here is what your value actually is because you're making me think how we often create value based on the people or surroundings that we have you know, the family we grew, grew up in, the friends, you know, the circle that we have, that's where we set our value. And it can be completely off base. But you have something that will help people say, no, this is your actual value, not the one that you got stuck in your head from, you know, your life until this point. Yeah. I love that. I mean, when, when people create their, um, you know, they create their own system mm -hmm. and they see it's unique to them, like I did, I, you know, I did the niche expert and then I've recently um, kind of, I, I've kind of, you know, it's, it's developed with me and I've now got the seven step magnetic branding system. Mm -hmm. You see, even like I say, even if you're really resistant to, to owning your value, yeah. you see it there. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my God, I'm doing all this for people. And mm -hmm. Um, it's and most I think the problem is most entrepreneurs we're so creative a little bit scatty we're going after 101 ideas and that's really always been the value for me of working with a mentor or a coach is just getting focused yeah. to pull that stuff out of yeah. you and just okay this is what we're gonna do this is it yeah so um, you have a number of systems it sounds like that you help people 
move through depending on what they need. When when you were doing this on your own though, before you began helping other people, I'm sure you kind of moved through every one of these processes and then built your expertise based on what you moved through. Right? Oh absolutely. Yeah. It's all it's all stuff that I've I've done and mm -hmm. you know been very frustrated with and yeah. had issues with and I had to re niche because I totally changed my direction of what I was doing. Um, I wanted to start my own company and start creating my own products and services um, rather than being commission based. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really delved into the whole niche niche thing and I just thought oh, goodness this is a minefield combine that with online yeah and trying to get your message out there and still be authentic and not really you know salesy and hypey and mm -hmm. um so it's just very much developed um over time and I've just kind of condensed it down now to the the simplest way <laughs> to build it all out online so that you can um you know, really take it to whatever level you want to and have your expertise, um, you know, recognized by people so that, like I say, you can reach the people that you really can help instead of trying to help everybody, which is just, uh, you know, a recipe for failure, especially online, because right. you, can't, you can't kind of adapt your message like you can when you're offline, when you're in person. Yeah. You can very much adapt it, can't you? Mm -hmm. But online, if you haven't got a clear message, I call it a juicy marketing message, mm -hmm. um, people will click away. Right. That's, you haven't got long. <laughs> <laughs> they won't know. Who, who is this? What are they doing? So your niche is to help people figure out what they're very best at, put it in a clear, uh, clear package, send it out online in a way that really exemplifies who they are and you have these systems that help people do this from the figuring out point all the way through to the getting it out to the public point right yeah yeah and yeah. what I call building that expert factor yeah. so that they can get attract their perfect clients online um, with ease they can build their list they can attract and collaborate with key influencers which is a, a perfect example of what we're doing here yeah because you can't do it on your own. No, you have to yeah. collaborate with other people, and that's the beauty of the internet. Okay. So it's just a very practical, systematic way um, of you know packaging up your expertise and getting it out there online. Yeah. Well, Rachel, I think you've probably um, tipped the balance for quite a few people watching right now, thinking, "Okay, I'm going to do it." <laughs> okay, <laughs> oh, I hope so. no more nine to five. I'm doing it. <laughs> she says it's that easy. It's not that easy. No, it's not. It's, it's not easy. It's incredibly fun. Have, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's the most fun way to have a career I could think of. I mean, I love being, like you said, um, you do this because you want to stay home with your kids. It's partly why I do it, too, because I've got two kids outside my office door right now. And when I'm done, you know, mommy gets to come out and make lunch and, and so on and so on. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's how it started. I mean, now I couldn't imagine having to you know, go to a job and ask somebody to go to, if I can go to the dentist. I mean, yeah. that was, <laughs> that was the thing that you said. For me, drive. I know. It's always one of the worst feelings. You know, my, my child yeah. is sick. I can't come in today. You've got to, you know, cancel all my meetings. And then I would feel guilty about that. Like, wait, I'm feeling guilty for staying home with my kid? What? <laughs> I don't feel that way ever, ever anymore. That's nah. completely gone. Yeah. Um, so, Rachel, you have, uh, everybody can go to your website, Rachel. Um, henka.com you can see it right on the screen and you have something for people that you want to give them to kind of help them maybe figure out yeah take yeah absolutely um, one of the big questions in my seven-step system um, one of the big questions I get asked is well what do I need to put on my website um, you know to make it magnetic to, to attract the right clients um, so I created a brand new checklist uh, and it's especially for viewers and they can get it at uh, rachelhenker.com forward slash summer okay. um, and it's, uh, and it's um, a checklist that really just shows you, um, you know, what you need on your website and um, in a very simple way because it can be so overwhelming. So you can kind of get started with that and think, okay, that, tick that off, tick that off. <laughs> yeah, okay. That sounds wonderful. Thank you, Rachel, so much for this interview today with all of its haphazardness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a very. I'm, I'm going to leave it up like this so that people can realize 
you can still generate information. Even being an expert, you can be dealing with life. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's a Absolutely. lesson in itself. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Rachel. Oh, thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.